Blessed be goddess Aphrodite. O oh, Eros, the conqueror in every fight, Eros, who squanders all men's wealth, who sleeps at night on girls' soft cheeks, and roams across the ocean seas and through the shepherd's hut sea. No immortal god escapes from you, nor any man who lives but for a day. And the one whom you possess goes mad. Even in good men you twist their minds, perverting them to their own ruin. You provoke these men to family strife. The bride's desire seen glittering in her eyes that conquers everything, its power and throne beside eternal laws. For there the goddess Aphrodite works her will, whose ways are irresistible. At a time when the gods still roamed amongst the mortals, three beautiful princesses dreamed of their future husbands would be like. One sister said, I want to marry a great general. The other sister said, my husband will be a wealthy king. What do you want your husband to be like, Psyche? Psyche said, all I want is a love that will lift my spirit. Her sisters laughed. The two sisters were beautiful, but Psyche was certainly the most beautiful. So beautiful that she attracted everyone's eyes, making her sisters envious. People from faraway kingdoms traveled long distances just to gaze at the famous princess Psyche. They would say, behold, the most beautiful creature to ever walk the earth. Psyche was worshipped as a true deity and with tributes previously paid to goddess Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty, were now addressed to the young and beautiful princess. They, all, they offended goddess Aphrodite, watched in anger, watched the parade that followed the princess while her temple was empty. Goddess Aphrodite gathered her son, Eros, the god of love and passion. Goddess Aphrodite said, Dear son, the mortals who think she is the same level as the goddess of love and beauty must be punished. Through your arrows, make Psyche fall in love with a hideous creature. As night fell, Eros went to the royal palace and steadfastly entered Psyche's room. Psyche was sleeping in her bed. Curiously, Eros approached the princess to see if she was really that beautiful. The god was overwhelmed as the beauty of Psyche was truly splendid. The god Eros said, The fact that my mother is jealous of this mortal being is no coincidence. Her beauty can eclipse the most beautiful amongst the nymphs and goddesses. In an unexpected turn of events, Psyche turned in her sleep, and this movement disoriented Eros, who accidentally wounded himself with his own arrow. The wounded god instantly fell in love with the young and beautiful mortal Psyche, and because of his love, Eros failed to accomplish the mission that would have caused harm to Psyche. Psyche carried on her life normally and did not suspect what had happened, but there was something strange going on. Time passed, and although she was the most beautiful and most beloved, Psyche was still single, 
while her sisters had several suitors. Her sisters said, Psyche, you've always been adorned by everyone, but you are single, while our sisters and I are already happily married to noble men. Her father said, don't worry, daughter of mine. Your beauty may be overwhelming to some men, but soon a suitor worthy of your heart will appear. But the king was indeed very much worried about his daughter's situation. The king was unaware the lack of suitors was because Eros refused to awaken the love of Psyche in any man. Since he was in love with the princess, he went to the Oracle of Delphi in a quest for answers. Inside, through the py Pythoness, the god Apollo pronounced himself. He said, your daughter will marry a perverse winged monster who is delighted to wound mortals and gods. The princess shall be left on the edge of an abyss in matrimonial attire where she shall be delivered by the most terrible creature who will cause her death. Apollo was referencing Eros, the, goddess, the god of love, the soul god harbored, the sun god harbored great resentment for Eros since he had made the god of music have unrequited loves. The king left the temple in tears as he was resistant to the idea of losing his favorite daughter. But the envious sisters of Psyche insisted that he was to obey the orientation of the oracle. They said, you must sacrifice Psyche or you will draw anger of the gods into our kingdom. The king then reveled the sorrowful fate of his daughter and said, My beloved daughter, by the will of the gods we will deliver you a terrible fate. Your beauty has become a curse. The princess was led to the abyss by a bridal procession which was, resembled a funeral procession. Psyche, hearing her parents' lamentations, did not hold back. Why do they now be known my fate? A short while ago they rejoiced proudly to see me adorned like a goddess. While they knew the sacrilege that was being perpetuated, now carry me up the cliff and let me meet my dismal fate. Psyche was abandoned on the edge of the abyss, in expectation of a terrible husband, a breeze started to lift Psyche towards the sky. The wind was the god Zephyr, also known as the West Wind. The princess levitated in the sky towards her destiny. After being swept a bit away by Zephyr, Psyche awoke in an idyllic place with flowers spread everywhere. A delicious scent perspired the air. A beautiful place featuring the, white, the whitest marble stood out in the landscape. Psyche climbed the stairs that led to the entrance of the palace, bewildered by all the wealth that surrounded her. The place was made of striking luxury. There was no shortage of adornments. Covered in gold and silver as you entered the palace, she heard a soft voice but could not tell where it came from. It said, My lady, everything that you see now belongs to you. We are at your disposal to assist you in anything you wish. There was no one around her, but the young woman understood these invisible servants. They helped her in the bath, at meals, and sang and played beautiful songs. The invisible server said, Now you shall go to your room and await the arrival of our master. Psyche asked, And what is your master like? 
They say he is a monster. The server replied, Some had mentioned him that way, but in fact, he's not evil, just volatile. Already in her room, Sykes stressed and waited on her fate. The cloak of Nyx, the goddess of night, had already fully clothed the skies. The room was in utter darkness, and it was impossible to any shape when Syke felt that something had crept through the window. The lady felt the presence of her new husband and could feel his breath on her neck. The young woman was tense and no idea what would happen to her amongst her expectations. She had a night of sublime pleasure and her new husband treated her with much love and affection. When she awakened in the morning, her husband had already left. And soon the darkness of the previous night she would not have any glimpse of her companion. Sykes spent the day getting to know the vicinities of her new residence, but she kept thinking about when she would find a mysterious creature again. The night arrived and Syke was already waiting for her husband. The couple met and loved each other on countless nights. On one of those, Syke couldn't resist and asked, My love, why do you always hide in the shadows? I would much like to, to feel how you really are. Eris replied, Isn't the love we share enough? All I'm asking is that you don't try to see me in the darkness. In the darkness, we are equals. Psych replied, I'm sorry if I annoyed you. It wasn't my intention. Psych decided to respect her husband's request and stop touching on the subject. Time passed and despite being very happy, Psyche missed her family. One night, Psyche said to Eris, husband of mine, I miss my family so much. It hurts my heart to know that they think I'm dead. I beg you to let me visit home. Eris accepted Sykes' request because, according to his thoughts, if she decided to return after being released, that would be the ultimate proof of their genuine love. The king was overjoyed when he saw his daughter Syke and said, My beloved daughter, I thought I would never see you again. Sykes' relatives were surprised in the, at the girl's return whom they thought they would never see again, and the return was triumphant. Psyche was adorned with the most beautiful jewels. She looked like the richest of queens. Her sisters asked, How is your life with the mysterious husband? Psyche answered, It couldn't be more wonderful. He is sweet and the best of everything, to please, and he pleases me. Her jealous sisters did not believe the story Syke told while she described the beautiful gifts to her relatives. They said to each other, everything about our sister tends to be too much. I don't think anything that she says is really that gorgeous. Syke overheard and replied, you don't have to believe me. Come with me and you can see for yourself. Zephyr, the west wind, led Syke and her sisters to the heavenly palace. When they got there, they realized that everything their sister had said was true, but this only made her sisters more jealous. The envious sisters decided to poison Syke's relationship. They said, I know that everything seems wonderful, but don't you remember the oracle said you married a monster? and you will be responsible for your death? Do this. When you sense that he is sleeping, take a knife, turn on a light, and after seeing the monster, cut his throat. Her sisters departed, but seeds of distrust have been planted in Sykes' heart. 
The night came and her husband was already asleep beside her. The young woman took a knife and a little lamp and approached her bedside. Psyche realized that this was not a monster, but a young man of divine beauty. The young woman moved close to contemplate her husband's breathtaking beauty and concluded that he could only be a god. But a drop of hot oil accidentally fell from the lamp and hit Eros's chest, who awoke frightened by the burn. And he faced Psyche wielding a knife. He said, how could you be such a fool? Is this how you repay my love? Thinking that I'm a monster and wanting to slash my throat? Psyche pled, forgive me, my love. I know I made a mistake, but we can make this right. Eris replied, I only ask you of one thing and you couldn't do it. And so you will never see me again. Eris flew out the window and Psyche jumped after him and couldn't reach him and hit the ground and fell. The fall injuries were light, but her heart was utterly broken. When they heard what Psyche had, that Psyche had returned, her sisters went to the cliff, hoping they would be blown away to the wet by the west wind Zephyr and Zephyr began to blow and the sisters threw themselves into the arms but he did not seize them letting them fall off the cliff the poor Psyche began to help with the tasks of goddess Demeter's temple but she never stopped thinking about her lost love in Demeter's temple, Psyche accomplished all her tasks with utmost dedication. But all this work was not enough to make the young woman stop thinking about her lost love. The goddess Demeter showed her pity, for the poor girl had decided to help her. Goddess Demeter said, Poor Psyche, I feel sorry for your pain, so I give you the following advice. Go to goddess Aphrodite's temple and offer yourself to the goddess with humility and submission. Then you will soften the goddess's wrath. Perhaps you will be able to win back her love. Psyche responded, Who am I to follow the advice of such a wise and benevolent goddess? So Psyche went to the goddess of love temple and she had no idea how she would be welcomed by the former mother-in-law. The young woman was met with great distrust by goddess Aphrodite. Goddess Aphrodite said, What is the most obnoxious and disloyal of creatures who ever walked the earth doing in my temple? Psyche responded, I humbly throw myself down before the goddess of love and put myself at the service in search of forgiveness. Goddess Aphrodite responded, Do you believe that you'll be forgiven that easily by me after robbing my altars and hurting my son? To purge your sins will be very painful and you will have the most difficult jobs which may cost you your own life. Psyche responded, I will do anything to at least have a small chance to get your forgiveness and win back my love. Goddess, Aphro Goddess Aphrodite chose to burden Psyche with painful tasks. As the first assignment, Psyche would ha then have to go to the grain barn and separate the different varieties which were thoroughly mixed. The difficulty of such a task would have overwhelmed even Hercules, the god Eros, who is secretly observing everything, made ants help Psyche. And her task, this way the young woman accomplished her task in record time. Goddess Aphrodite was angered to see the work accomplished so quickly. The goddess said to Psyche, 
I don't know how you manage to accomplish this task so easily, but the next one won't be so straightforward. Psyche was supposed to bring goddess Aphrodite a handful of golden wool from the dangerous sheep. These were no ordinary animals, since besides having the golden wool, they were also enthusiasts of human flesh. The sheep passed through a narrow trail between thorny plants, and part of their wool ended up sticking to the thorns. Psyche collected the wool and was left between the thorns and presented the golden threads to goddess Aphrodite. Goddess Aphrodite said, Well done, but do not think this is over. The goddess of love and beauty demanded that the young woman bring a jug of water from the source of the Sphinx River, the Styx River, which was located on top of a mountain. The task was seemingly impossible to achieve, but Zeus ordered his eagle to collect the water from the source and deliver it to Psyche, and so one more job was accomplished. Goddess Aphrodite said to Psyche when she delivered the jug of water, I admit you have been able to accomplish these tasks by conquering the mercy of the gods, but your next will have no price that only you can, play, you can pay. The hassle you've caused me has exhausted my beauty. So I demand that you go to the kingdom of Hades and ask Queen Persephone to fill this box with beauty so that I can restore my splendor. And then you shall have my forgiveness and blessings to reunite with my son again. Psyche knew now that her end was near and she knew no other way to enter the underworld than to take her own life. The young woman was ready to jump from the top of the tower when she heard a voice like a ghost. There is, there is another way. I will tell you the route and how you can overcome the obstacles known as Charon, the ferryman, and Cyrus, the three-headed dog. But when you come back, don't ever open the box in any situation. Following the guidance of the mysterious voice, she found a cave that would take her to the underworld. After a lengthy descent, she reached the banks of the Ankron River, and there she met Charon, the ferryman. She said to the ferryman, I serve the goddess Aphrodite and have an audience with Queen Persephone, who awaits me. She then gave two coins to the boatman, Charon, as payment. So she crossed the river of souls aboard the domains of Haiti. Psyche introduced herself to the king and queen of the underworld, Hades and Persephone. Queen Persephone asked, What does a mortal do in our domains? Psyche replied, I'm here as service to Aphrodite, who asks you fill this box with some of your beauty so she can restore hers. Persephone gave the box back to her, which was now heavier, and Psyche sent out on her way out of the underworld. Psyche came across Cer Cerberus, preventing her passage. However, she had taken her guide her guides by the mysterious voice. Barley and honey bread soaked with a sleeping pill. She offered it to the dog who fell asleep and Psyche proceeded to the surface. As the boatman made his return trip, the young woman saw her own reflection in the waters, and she noticed how all this worked and made her look tired. Psyche started the descent to the surface, and she would soon finish her last mission. Psyche said to herself as she was rising to the surface, 
The box is nearly overflowing with beauty. It won't hurt if I take just a little bit for myself. And like this, when I find my love again, I will be beautiful and glowing for him. Psyche opened the box and out came a black mist. As she absorbed the most, Psyche started to faint and life began to leave her body. Eris felt that something had happened to his love and went to rescue her. When he found Psyche, he was cold. she was cold as a cadaver. Thantanos, the embodiment of death, was already beside the girl's body. Using the powers, Eros lifted the mortal mist from his beloved's body and put it back into the box. Psyche awakes in Eros's arm and said, My love, I feel now that I can finally look in your eyes without risking losing you. And the couple kissed passionately. Eros instructed Psyche to finish her work, handing the box of goddess Aphrodite. In the meantime, the god of love flew to Mount Olympus, where he begged Zeus to convince goddess Aphrodite to allow the couple to bond. Eros led Psyche to Mount Olympus. All of the gods were waiting for them, and from the hands of Zeus himself, and goddess Aphrodite's blessing, Psyche received the nectar and ambrosia divine foods that bestow immortality. Zeus said, Psyche, your path was thorny, but ultimately you managed to complete your quest. Now you are immortal and free from the obstacles created by men's ignorance, and the bonds that bind you to your husband will never be breached, and this love will persist for all eternity. From the union of Eros and Psyche was born Hedon, the deity of pleasure, and the love of the couple lasted forever. Blessed be goddess Aphrodite, blessed be god Eros. Beauty queen, aerial deity, wrapped in foam and scented mist, crossing tides and blue currents, crowned with iridescent pearls. His light shines in my eternal body. I open up like a pearly rose, like the immaculate dove, protected by Eris's archer. <laughs> 